welcome welcome my good people welcome to my channel the title of my channel is called fantastic fantasy today we're going to be learning about 15 facts about aquaman's body So, according to this article, body of water. Hmm. 15 weird facts about Aquaman's body. So, let's go. Now, I do like these little, this little picture right here. It's showing his face and his skeletal nature. There's one on the far, this picture on the far right where he's looked like he's water. I've never seen that in Aquaman, in his carnations. But I'm sure it took place during a pre-52 era. Because that comic book life cycle lived for about, after the Infinite Crisis, when DC made itself, at least it lasted for at least 30 years, close to it. All right, so let's get into some of his history. Aquaman made his first appearance in DC Comics with the 1941's More Funds Comics, 73, by Paul Norris and Mort Wesnicka, but made a huge impression. He started out as a backup feature and moved on to multiple solo series. He was one of the founding members of the Justice League. If you saw the movie, which was so-so, he's a founding member. And has often been listed along with Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman as four of the most recognized superheroes in the DC Universe. Yes, he's one of the most recognized figures, but... Because of that dumb Super Friend cartoon series, he's one of the most mal malign superheroes. The, if you know about the superhero series, Super Friends in the 1970s, it portrayed Aquaman powers and his physical abilities as extremely weak. Every episode, he was getting dehydrated and became weak on the Super Friends. He couldn't do nothing except ride them dumb seahorses. At the same time, he's been disrespected, as I just now said, especially after his weak, after his weak portrayal in the 1960s, here we go, TV show Super Friends. I grew up in the 70s, so that's when I watched it. So I guess in the 70s, it was just a remake. But the Super Friends cartoon series did a great disrespect to Aquaman and his unique abilities. It made him the joke of the superhero Gone wrong. Aquaman may look like a regular human being, but he's got some weird things going on under his under the gold shirt and green pants. So this site, which is called CBR, decided to put the spotlight on Aquaman's body. We'll be going over his less known powers and strange things that have happened to his body over the years. So let's jump right into it. Number 15. Aquaman could fly. Now, I don't know if he can still fly. But he could fly at one time. What's the one thing you wouldn't expect to see from Aquaman? The hero who lives at the bottom of the ocean. Flight. Yet, thanks to some mystical powers, which those the Atlantis people love to utilize, magic, his body can do just that. Aquaman was given a mystical trident which we saw in a Justice League movie, by the god Poseidon that gives him new powers, including the ability to fly. But Aquaman, as you see up here, he's hovering in the air, and I believe he's talking to Wonder Woman. The power has been used inconsistently in the comics, so some series he can fly, and some he can't. In some issues, Aquaman has shown leaping great distances, including across a city. Yes, he has powerful leg muscles. Yet in Aquaman number 46, Aquaman is clearly shown hovering in the air alongside Wonder Woman. Some people have found it kind of weird that a sea-based hero will have the power to fly, but it sure makes it a lot easier for him to keep up with the Justice League when Superman and Wonder Woman are flying with them. And of course, we know, if you know about 
sea life, there are some fish who can jump out the water and fly for brief moments of time. I think they call it flying fish. And I've seen them, especially when I was a child, they jump out the water and they actually fly for several minutes or so. Then they jump back in the water now because they have to breathe. Number 14, something that we all have known. Aquaman can breathe underwater. Like his name implies, Aqua Man spends a lot of time in the water and under the water. So it's a good thing he can breathe under there. His amphibious, he he's amphibious, so he can stay indefinitely in the air and in the sea. However, the way Aquaman breathes in the water has changed over the, over the years. Now, think too, he's sort of like the Submariner. If you know about the these uh, Marvel Submariner, I'm not sure if Aquaman, I don't know, the longer he's found the water, does he have his full strength? Or does his strength begin to diminish the longer he stay on land? But unlike the Submariner from Marvel, Aquaman was born on land. So maybe his power sets never decreased because he was born on land. In the original story, Aquaman was a normal child whose father found secret methods of teaching him to draw oxygen from the water. Never heard of this, so I guess it was a long time ago. Later, his origin was changed so that he was half Atlantean, a humanoid species that's native to the sea. In some versions of Aquaman, he had gills, but most of the other stories gloss over exactly how he breathes in water. It's possible his lungs are somehow able to draw oxygen from water or he might breathe through his skin like frogs okay that's that's novel but since he cut up his skin so much that may not be a good idea the only thing that he usually has exposed is his face so if he just had his face exposed he would not be getting a good oxygen supply so he may he may have to breathe some other type of way he may have special gills in his lungs for all we know number 13 Aquaman fathers mutated him. The original Aquaman started out as a the original Aquaman started out as a scientist son who learned the secrets of Atlantis, but later on his origin was changed. So he was the son of a human father mm -hmm, and an Atlantean mother, who I believe that was the queen of Atlantis. Since the Atlanteans could breathe underwater, Aquaman inherited that ability. I don't think the Atlanteans can breathe on land. Just in the water. Because he probably can breathe on the water because his father is human and his mother is Atlantean. So he's a hybrid. Let me go to number 12. As we all notice, his most renowned and greatest power and the most joked about power in all of comic books. Aquaman can communicates with fish. If there's one thing that makes Aquaman the butt of more jokes, as I just now stated, and his power to command sea life, we don't know what that is. The idea that Aquaman talks to fish is a popular joke on sketch and stand-up comedy, but it's not really true, at least not any more. And I, I, and I don't like how DC used that power. I think Aquaman not just talk to fish, he should be able to have awareness of what they see. He should be able to see exactly what they see and feel what they feel. And that would make his powers more uh, incredible. Because, you know, most 75% of the planet is covered by water. If Aquaman had was able to have constant telepathy with fish and able to see what they see, there's very few things that could escape his awareness. And plus, since human beings allegedly allegedly came from the water, he should be able to influence human beings to an extent. Because our body is basically made up of water. We made up of water. So he should be able to communicate with, with human beings to a degree. And influence human beings to a degree to a degree. So I don't think DC utilized his power to its fullest extent. When Aquaman first appeared in comics, he could talk to fish in their own language. But that but that didn't last long because fish don't actually have a language. How do we know that? That's the arrogance of human beings. A semen that some life 
don't have their own language. This chain so the Aquaman's mind can use telepathy to communicate with any sea life. After the reboot in 2011 with the new 52 continuity, Aquaman lost most of, most of his ability to communicate directly with marine life and could only, quote, push them with mental suggestions to do different things. He won't be going back to having conversations with the helibut anytime soon. Okay, we we all know this, which the, the dumb cartoon series in the 1960s and 70s did not utilize. It made Aquaman sound like he was a normal, regular human being. He can withstand tremendous sea depths. He can go to the deepest part of the oceans where even mechanical constructs can't go. So that man should have vast superhuman strength. But the 1960s show did not take advantage of that. It made him a joke. Aquaman, number 11, Aquaman is super strong. One of Aquaman's least recognized powers outside of comics is his enormous strength. He needs to be strong in order to survive in the ocean's death and survive that cold. Not just the depths of the ocean, but survive the extreme temperature change. He needs to be strong in order to survive in the ocean's depths, but his body has adapted to become one of the most powerful heroes in a Justice League. Correct. He's undergone tremendous depths and tremendous pressure on his bodies. So this man should be in class of Superman and Wonder Woman. Like I said, he's not on the level of Superman, but he's way beyond normal human strength. He can't make Superman, he couldn't get Superman a good battle. And he's fast too. This has been especially true since the new 52 reboot continuity. A good example came in 2013, Aquaman number 23, when Aquaman fought the ancient dead king. Aquaman picked up a sunken cargo ship from the ocean floor and dropped it on his enemy. Since the cargo ships have an average weight of 153,223 tons, and he had to push up against even more tons of seawater, it was a jaw-dropping feat. Number 10, one of his unrecognized power is his tremendous, thick, tough skin. Aquaman looks pretty fragile in his orange shirt and green pants, but looks can be deceiving. If a normal human tried to go down to the bottom of the Marianas Trench, he would be crushed to death, crushed to the size of a soda can. By 1,000, 86,000 bars of pressure or more than a thousand times the pressure at sea level. If you're at the bottom of that trench, you have a thousand times the pressure as has been on normal land. However, Aquaman isn't a normal human. He can withstand tremendous pressures on his body. In fact, all that pressure has given his body the ability to withstand more than just tons of water pressing up on him. He his seemingly thin skin is strong enough to withstand everything from machine gun fire to explosive. He even shrugged off a punch from Wonder Woman. While his skin isn't as tough as Superman's, it's still tough enough to take whatever most bad guys can dish at him. Dish out at him. So if you hit him, you may stand a good chance of breaking your own your fist instead of hurting him. And I would and I, I've stopped reading comic books. But the, the time I really stopped was 2013 with the New 52, and I was impressed how they treated Aquaman. They made him seem like a person to be respected and a normal human being, but not go talk and smack in his face because he has enough power to just pluck you and knock you out. Number nine, Aquaman and the Clear. One of the more mystical aspects to Aquaman's body was discovered in 1995, Swamp Thing, number 158. In the 1980s, during the DC rebirth or relaunch, the first relaunch that I can remember in major, by a major comic book vendor. After the crisis on Infinite Earth, DC was one of the most, did the most, most incredible thing that I know in comic book history. They rebooted the whole continuity, everything. In the 1980s, Alan Moore created a 
new element in the Swamp Thing's mythology called the green. The green is an elemental force that connects all plant life and Swamp Thing bonds to it for his power. Later, other heroes discover their own connections like Animal Man's animal based force called the red. Aquaman discovered he was part of the clear, a dimension that connected all sea life. I can live with that. It was the clear that gave him his telepathic, telepathic connection to the marine life and also gave him the power to control water. I guess he lost that ability. He could even control creatures like seagulls that had, co had a connection to sea life. He should be able to connect, control human beings too. He should be able to control mammals because we all need water. We all are connected to sea life. In more recent versions of Aquaman, his connections to the clear has been downplayed or removed altogether to lessen his power base, I suppose. Number eight, Aquaman needs water. Okay, so this is going about something that I said earlier. Most of the heroes had weaknesses built into their history. Superman has kryptonite, Green Lantern has yellow, and Aquaman once, once, he once had a weakness to dry land. So that may be gone. In 1959, Adventure Comics 256 introduced, introduced the idea that Aquaman had to come in contact with water every hour or he would or he would die. Now that's lame. Every hour. But of course, it didn't say how much water he needed. Did he just need a glass of water? Did he just need rain to fall on him? Did he just need to put a wet towel on him? Or even like a wet towel? It didn't say how much water he needed. The odd thing is that Aquaman had no trouble staying on land for long periods of time before that. Correct. He was born on land. He didn't need no water then. From what I know, his parents did not put him in no tank. It seemed like he was born like a normal human being on land. So why did he come up with this lame idea? That weakness stayed around throughout the, see, the Silver Age, where Aquaman was always running off to find water. Lame. The Silver Age, the 1950s, affected the 1960 and 1970s television version of the Super Friends Aquaman, where they made him lame. Superhero weaknesses have fallen out of favor, especially due to the Golden Age, so the water weakness began to be less used. In some cases, it was said that Aquaman could absorb humidity from the air so he could, so he would be fine. That's good, so he does have a limited control of water. After the new 52 reboot, the whole weakness of water went away and he hasn't been back since. So now he can live on land indefinitely. His power base does not seem to decrease like the Submariner. Number seven, just going back to the, the crisis era, Aquaman lost a hand. And I remember that. I remember when he lost his hand. I never read about it, but I remember. In the 1990s, it was decided to make Aquaman rougher and tougher, and in the process, cooler. That's why the new Aquaman series in 1994 started with him growing out his beard, as you see up here, and a mustache, as you see up here. He looks more Poseidon-like, more Greek god-like now. But things took a turn for the worse when the villain Carbidus Car stole his power to control sea life. In the 1994, in 1994's Aquaman number two, Carbardus fought Aquaman and forced the hero's left hand into a pool of hungry piranhas. So why would the piranhas eat Aquaman's hand and they know he has an affinity with sea life? See, DC made him weak. Aquaman should have uh, an aura around him where sea life does not hurt him. Where all creatures in the sea have a natural affinity to him. That should be a power that they gave him. And especially since and with that affinity power, even human beings will have an affinity for him. But DC, see, they could make Aquaman a really powerful character if they knew how to handle him. From there, Aquaman started wearing a harpoon's hook in place of his missing hand and moved on to a hook prosthetic which looked pretty awesome. At one point, Aquaman even got a magical hand made of water in its place. Eventually, 
after the new 52 reboot, Aquaman Hand came back, but we wonder if he still feel it's missing. Number six, Aquaman can swim very, very fast. Yes, he, when he swim, he's on a level of flash running. He's at the he, he's at the level of Superman, exceed Mach 10. It probably sounds like we're stating the obvious that Aquaman can swim fast, but you probably don't know how fast. Aquaman isn't just a fast swimmer by human standards. He's actually the fastest swimming creature on Earth by a long shot. With his superhuman strength, he can rip through the ocean at speeds that rival even man-made machines. A good example came in 2012 with Aquaman 11, where Aquaman was riding on a jet and jumped off to swim instead. At the speed he was going, someone commented he could outrun the jet, which could go hypersonic. That's much faster than submarines or speedboats. In other comics, Aquaman has been clocked at Mark 20, meaning he can swim faster than most aircraft. He can swim so fast, he may, be, he may be able to go around the earth in a matter of minutes. Here we go, number five, Aquaman's eyes. Remember, he can see in near darkness at the bottom of the ocean trenches where light does not uh, evade that ocean depths. There's no lights at the bottom, there's no sunlight at the bottom of the ocean trench or I guess even 200 feet below underwater, the light, may, you may not have any uh, sunlight. If there's one power that even hardcore fans of Aquaman almost never mention, it's his superhuman eyes. That's because they aren't as flashy as superhuman strength or invulnerability or used as often as his communicating with the marine animals. But believe us, he needs those weird eyes. That's as much as all of those other powers, if not more. And his eyes have to be super strong because when he's going at superhuman speeds into the water, you know projectiles hitting him in the face and in his eyes. So his eyes may, his whole body is extremely durable. There may not, there may not be no weak point on his body. He probably, he does not have no Achilles heel, a certain spot where you can stab him. His eyes allow him to see clearly through the water up to 36,000 feet. And, and in complete darkness, as I stated. Even in clear water, an average human can see 230 feet at the most. When it comes to the deep ocean with its clouds of microscopic plankton and lack of sunlight, your regular diver is almost completely blind. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem for Aquaman, whose eyes allow him to see clearly through the water up to 36,000 feet. For all we know, Aquaman has made, he may have a sonar-like mechanism in him. He may have echolocation. Because his eyes can't see, it's dark down there. He may have an echolocation ability. They should give him that. And he can use that echolocation on land to fight villains and whatever. And in complete darkness. That also gives him razor-sharp vision on land as well as night vision. Okay, here we see an, an, an art form that was above earlier. Aquaman turned into water, number four. Aquaman's body has spent a lot of time in water, but there have been a few times where it's actually become water. In 2002, Justice League number 70, he was dealt with the aftermath of a supervillain going back in time to keep Atlanta from sinking 3,000 years earlier. He trapped Aquaman in a pool where he turned into a watery version of himself. In another incident, Aquaman had a hand of living water that he used as a weapon, as was mentioned earlier, revive, reviving an ancient spirit known as the Thirst. When he, when he bonded with the Thirst, Aquaman became the water bearer and a liquid being. The third moment happened in the brightest day, number 24, when he, when he was brought back as a water elemental to stop Swamp Thing, who had been infected by the rock. Number three, Aquaman can use sonar. Okay, like I said, he can use sonar. Aquaman is may, may look human, but they are way beyond ours. Normal humans hear sounds because of the vibration of air against our eardrums, but sounds underwater 
can sound garbled and distorted to us. On the other hand, Aquaman can hear perfectly not only on the land, but under the sea. That's not just about hearing conversations with other Atlanteans. That is called echolocation, as I mentioned, which is used by whales and dolphins. Also, since sound travels four times faster underwater than on land, Aquaman can hear sounds from miles away. Under the ocean, whales have, have special ears that protect them from being overwhelmed by the sounds. But Aquaman ears apparently aren't, aren't, which means he may be dealing with a lot of noise. Number two. Aquaman is a martial artist. Yes, because he did spend a long time with his people in Atlantis, so he was trained in the art of war. While some people think Aquaman is useless without fish around, his body was very well suited for fighting bad guys on land. He is a highly trained martial artist who can use weapons or his bare hands to dish out pain. He's been trained by Batman and Atlantean warriors, you see. Batman and Atlantean Waters. You know, Batman is one of the top fighters in the DC comic universe. So he knows not only how to fight with martial artists on the surface, but also knows some ancient martial artists arts that have been forgotten. And since he's been trained in um, Atlantean warfare, he probably taught Batman a thing or two to add to Batman's repertoire of being an established fighter. Number one, Aquaman once could control water like his girlfriend or his wife, Mira. Aquaman's main weapon has always been his trident. Classically, it was used as a strong but with relative normal melee weapon. But in the modern DC universe, it holds enormous power. The trident was given to him by the god Poseidon. And it is nothing less than an extension of the god's power. The power of, of Poseidon's trident is off the charts. It can be used in battle, of course, but also gives Aquaman power to, over water in all its forms. So I guess in mist, vapor, liquid, and solid, he can control water in any form. The trident has been seen moving and twisting water, making everything from living elementals, elementals to tidal waves. Since the weather is so connected to the movement of clouds and humidity, it makes sense that the trident also lets Aquaman command it. He makes strong storms and even lightning, which can flood ships and cities. And also with that trident, his trident is so resilient and so powerful that I've read and I've seen him stab dark side with it. He got dark side in his eyes when his omega beans come back, come out. So his trident is not a weapon to be played with. His trident may be one of the most hollow and revered weapons in all comic book lore. So thank you for stopping by, my people. Learn about important benefits of Aquaman. I heard that the Aquaman movie is coming out December 21st. I will have my ticket. I hope you get yours. And I hope you enjoy the Aquaman movie that's coming out soon. If you like the comments, if you like uh, what I was talking about, Please give me a comment. Anything you want to talk about Aquaman, I will entertain your thoughts. If you like, click on that thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe for future content about anything comic book that I find interesting, please subscribe. If you have subscribed and you would like and you would like to be notified immediately about new content, please click on that bell button. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you all have a wonderful day and keep reading your comic books.